broadcasting from Boston, Massachusetts. You're listening to the Technology Equals Equality podcast. Welcome to the Technology Equals Equality podcast. I'm your host, Lori Brooks, and this is episode 41. I would like to welcome Danielle Molinar, founder of Virtual Efficiency, to the show today. Danielle founded Virtual Efficiency in May of 2010 when her boss sold the small business she had been with for many years. Danielle's team of virtual assistants, also known as location-independent entrepreneurs, consists of four dedicated professionals with a virtual office based in the Amsterdam area in the Netherlands. Virtual Efficiency provides virtual PA services to clients in the Netherlands and other European countries, the U.S. and Australia. Danielle, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. How are you this morning? Good morning. I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Of course. We would love to know a story of how it is you once saw the future before you decided to begin branding yourself or building out your first business. Yes, well, I have been thinking about that. Um, My drive has always been to work hard and provide for my family. Um, So I didn't really have like a big dream of starting uh, my own business. So my biggest uh, inspiration would have to be my mother and father because they um, they immigrated to Australia in the early 70s when my twin brother and I were babies. Mm-hmm. And uh, my father's a bricklayer and he's really good at it. And um, at that time, the early 70s, uh, Australia was really like a land of opportunities and welcoming migrants. Right. And um, yeah, he built a business as a subcontract bricklayer and he was very successful at it. And I've always been like really proud of my father. Um, yeah, yeah. So my drive has always been to like really work hard and provide provide for my family, but also to make my father proud, which he is. So yeah. nice. <laughs> That's so cute. I love that that yeah. your parents were your inspiration, and that yes, you were definitely. really. You I, know, I, I think parents. Yeah, every parent should be like a really good example for their children. You know, exactly. there's so many opportunities really. Yeah. Certainly, certainly. And I I love that your dad, you know, having built out his own business, you had the opportunity to witness someone who was able to build out a successful business. And that's really helpful, you know, for a future entrepreneur to be able to see a parent go through building out a business, you know, and becoming successful at it is a really important, you know, a, a really important key there. I love that. But Danielle, when you were a child, when you were watching your father build out his bricklaying um, business, were you thinking, you know what, in the future I might build out my own business? Did you feel like that's what you would do in the future? Or as a kid, were you proud of your father but had other ideas as to what it is you might do in the future? Well, actually, you know, I, I grew up in Australia. And mm-hmm. it's a beautiful country, and actually my dream was to be a vet or either a marine biologist, which you know, never happened. <laughs> but, yeah, I did have other aspirations. I, I, I was thinking, um, well, actually, I went to Europe after I finished high school, mm-hmm. and um, when I came to, I was only going to stay here for a year, but I sort of stuck, got stuck here in Amsterdam. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, you know, things turned out differently than I aspired to, but, um, you know, I've it's always really been my dream to 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 just really be myself and to really um, be successful in anything I do. So yeah, certainly. And I think it's an important, you know, aspect of the entrepreneurial journey that it often doesn't end up where you initially start. You know what I mean? The yeah. the journey is something that's ever evolving, and the ability to pick up and maneuver and pivot throughout the entrepreneurial journey is what really leads to long-term success. Um, So you may not have thought that you were going to be in Amsterdam, but that's how it worked out, and it's working for you. What were some of the first steps that that you took when you decided, okay, you know what, I'm going to build out my own business. I want to be me. I want to, this is how I'm going to do it. What were some of the first steps that you took once you decided to to work for yourself? Yeah, for me it was a bit of a plunge because I was actually in a bit of a predicament before I started. I started in 2010, mm-hmm. and at the time I was a single mother and I had two young children, uh, two young uh, teenagers actually. Wow. And um, 
my former boss uh, announced about uh, a year before that that she was going to sell her business, and I'd been working there very happily for about 10 years. Wow. And she sold her business. Um, uh, you know, once her business was sold, that the company that she sold it to, I, I felt very unhappy there. And yep. I worked there for three uh, months, about three months, and then I decided to quit right. and um, start my own business. So it was actually <laughs> on the way, <laughs> really. But I, I did have the skills. I did have, like, the office management skills, and uh, right. and my former boss was a mentor to me. So, you know, it was a really great opportunity. So for me, starting up was really sort of a jump in the deep end, you know, like uh, eyes right. wide shut, fingers crossed, and all that. <laughs> But um, I was really fortunate enough to, to land a really big client when I started out and also a couple of smaller clients. And right. it all comes down to networking, really. So I sort of, and my, my business really grew from there. So in reflection, I think everything just fell into place at the right time. So it was sort of an opportunity that I took, I think. Certainly, your your path was readjusted by circumstances outside of your control. You know, with with the business having been sold, and when you and I think that you know one of those pieces that really is becoming more and more common nowadays in the entrepreneurial journey to have had your mind somewhat settled in a career of some sort. Um, you know, and as your career evolves, something twists in that journey that sparks the desire for an entrepreneurial path to develop. Um, You know, I I myself was in the corporate world. I was um, doing a lot of work with financial service admins, you know, Um, and then I got to a point where once I was diagnosed with Crohn's in 2009, I had to take a real step back and take a look at, you know, life as it was and recognize that, this was not what I was going to be doing. This isn't what I wanted. And that's not really what I wanted to see for my future was just uh, being a part of a corporation in in which I was more fearful of my stability yeah. versus, you know what, I, you, you understand much, mm-hmm. much like with the situation of, you know, 10 years with a company prior to it being sold. And when a company is sold, the turnover, the change that occurs in, the, in any corporation is drastic. Yes, definitely. And, and yeah. the, uh, it can change your mindset. So your mindset was definitely sparked. I love the fact that your, your former boss was your mentor. And that is so wonderful that you had the access to and utilize the resources that were around you and available for your use. You know, exactly. often, she was excellent. So, you know, I did call her and ask her, you know, <laughs> tips and startups and things. But um, yeah, yeah, it was excellent. definitely. Now that's wonderful because it's it's those moments and those people in your life, the positive people, the supportive people, um, that really help to make the journey successful. Um, you have to surround yourself with those people who believe in you and who know what you're capable of, definitely. Um, so what would you say is one of the most important things uh, someone should really focus on if they're in a similar situation and a business they've been with for a length of time is going through some sort of shift and they feel like they're going to go ahead and go out on their own, what would you suggest that they focus on most? That's a very good question. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I think it really depends on what kind of business you want to start up. Um, that me, for me is a virtual system. You know, I hope people um, are inspired to, to follow this path. Um, the, the, the key metric really is to, to, to focus on um, establishing long-term relationship with clients. So um, it's, it's all about networking. That, that's the most important thing, so that the people who you know and um, you know let them know that you're available. Um, and all the clients I do have, I have established long-term relationships with them. It's, it's yeah. not very short-term, and um, and it, it, it's it's also establishing like client loyalty as well. So uh, when you first start out, you do need clients. So you know, I would suggest um, yeah, calling around um, former former people you work for, yeah, uh, friends, family, uh, online. That's very sure. important, yeah. Sure. And from, from the start also uh, would be um, to charge the correct rates, you know, so that um, so, so that you do have a viable business when you start out. Yeah. 
That's that's a really good piece that you said there, Danielle. <laughs> Trading your hours for dollars can exactly. be extremely difficult. Um, how do you feel when you began billing people? How do you feel you went about coming up with your ideas as to how to charge or how to go into, you know, which way to bill someone up front or, or later on, things of that sort? What helped you come to those decisions as you began? Well, when I say, I, I sort of I bill for hours. I, I don't mm -hmm. have any. Uh, I know lots of virtual assistants in, in America do um, project rates and right. uh, things. Um, I have tried that. I have tried um, saying, look, I'll bill you for for you know ten hours or something. Um, but what I do find is that some clients, you know, only need you for an hour. And right. I felt really bad charging them for ten hours when I, you know, I did, wasn't doing the work. So for me, it didn't work that way. So what I did was, um, you know, I just charge for hours, really, and that's um, awesome. and that's you know works out fine. And before I did, before I started, I did call around. I did do some research called uh, other startups. You remember when I started, there weren't very many virtual assistants, right. but um, th there were some, and lots of people um, working in offices, you know, so they weren't doing really virtual assistants, but more office right. management. Mm -hmm. But um. I, I did ask them what, what their rates were, and I, I, I set the same rates. And in my view, many VAs don't charge uh, enough, really, to sustain a viable business. Right. Uh, they, they focus on hourly income, and, you know, they don't really take other costs into account. So. Right. Yeah. No, definitely, and and I think that is um, that's kind of one of the reason why I pinpointed on that because I think sometimes it's very difficult to figure out how to set that price point, exactly. um, you know, for in a personal sense. So the fact that you took the time to do that research to really look into what other local, um, you know, professionals were charging for similar services, and then setting your rates accordingly is, is a really good tip for those who are looking to leap into something of that sort. Danielle, what do you feel was the key to your success? What do you feel really has assisted you throughout your path? Um, you know, it's 2015. You've been with, uh, you know, you've started this approximately five years ago, yeah. five years and some change. So throughout these five years, what do you feel has really propelled you through the five years and kept you to uh, move down this path in a successful manner? Well, actually, the, the most important thing is giving it 150% uh, instead of 100%. Mm -hmm. And, you know, starting up a business is really difficult, but growing and maintaining a viable business is. Yes. And um, to be successful when you start up, you really need to offer a valuable service. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's the best thing for a startup. For, um, and... Um, no, no, that's, the, that's the most important thing, and establishing having a service that that you know people need really. Right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Making sure yeah. that you are definitely solving a need in whatever industry it is that they're going into, making sure exactly. that. You know, you're you're giving it your all and then some to make sure that you're really providing that service and then some just so that not only are you really over delivering for your own clients for their need, but you're also making yourself memorable and, and growing those connections and making sure that the networking that you are striving to do is actually going to be fruitful later on. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. So what would you caution as being one of the biggest mistakes you would see uh, a first-time entrepreneur making, or, or you know, what do you feel was your biggest mistake when you decided to embark on the journey? Uh, without sounding cocky, I, I didn't <laughs> make any mistakes. Actually. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it was it was the right time, the right thing at the right time. Um, what, what I do notice nowadays is that we're living in a sort of a copy-paste generation at the moment. Yeah. And, uh, you know, platforms like WordPress has made uh, the internet really accessible to a lot of people and and um, it's easy to start a business without proper preparation. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I, I would suggest to really sit down and, uh, you know, write down what you're passionate about and to also ask yourself what you absolutely love doing. You know, your research, research can go from there to see if you can translate your passion into a viable business. That, that's really the most important thing yeah. to, to set up a business plan 
that is important and also offer offer a skill you know don't, don't sell wordpress services if you you've only made one website you know you may know how it works but you know you, you can't offer that to a client having said that you can um you know gather a team together if you if, if it's your dream to to start a, um, a website development company then you, you can also um collaborate and and get the get the knowledge you know from other people and, and manage manage the people so you know there are so many opportunities so certainly certainly yeah. certainly and i love the way you put that danielle one of the most important pieces before you begin any journey is to really sit down figure out what your passion is there are very few people who you can honestly walk up to nowadays and say what is your passion exactly. and they have a real answer you know so yeah. i i love that you you uh indicated to really clarify what your passion is and then from there derive whether or not there is a need that you could possibly serve with the skills that you have in whatever industry it is that you choose. But first and foremost, sitting down to really make those connections clear it's is, is thing. Yeah, 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 definitely. Danielle, you've been absolutely wonderful, and, and I truly appreciate you sharing today. The show is designed to really help entrepreneurs come up with ideas for new innovative companies in an in industry, you know, to solve the pain in an industry that they may not have been thinking of. If you had a magic wand and could change anything at all in your business, what would it be and why? I thought about that question. I find it really, really hard, really difficult to answer <laughs> um, because I love my business the way it is. So there is actually nothing I would like to change, really, because I have, like, the perfect business. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what would I say? What, what I do notice that um, um, a lot, lots of people do um, expect a lot for almost nothing. But that's probably the only thing you know. If, uh, yeah, that's probably the only thing you know that the uh, value. If you you, you oh, I don't know how to say it. So I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's you great. Right. You, you know, you can you can hire a virtual assistant in India for a dollar an hour. You know, but right. you get what you pay for. But you know, it's uh, uh, someone with valuable skills. Um, you know, who can help help your business. That's that's. You know, it's, it's also very important for, for yourself as well. So. Certainly, certainly. Yeah. Actually, having uh, a community that supports and recognizes the value behind the services provided uh, yeah. is definitely a piece that, um, you know, is, is something that I don't think most businesses think of as ha having something to change. You know what I mean? It's almost like most of the time we think about operationally, you know, what is it that we could change, but environmentally, socially around us in terms of having those that we are serving truly understand the full-fledged value that's being provided is, is an extremely important piece. So, Danielle, I absolutely love that. I, I thank you. Thank you for you know, again, sharing and taking the time to speak with the technology equals equality community today. Please okay. share. <laughs> Certainly. Share the best way for our listeners to find you. Um, I, you can find me online. You just um, type in my name and I'm there. So uh, LinkedIn, my website, um, Daniel Molina, you just type it in and um, you'll find me. So. Perfect. Yeah. I will be sure to link to your homepage from the show notes page, so we will make but sure that sure, that's... Be sure it's the English page. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly will. I certainly, yeah. certainly will. How about I, I include links to both pages so that no matter where the, the listeners are at that point, um, they are able to access and, and view and see the website in their respective language. Thank you. Thank you once again. We truly, truly do appreciate you taking the time to touch base. You're very welcome. Thank you for this time. Thank you.
It's super easy to get caught up working in your business and not take the time to focus on your business. Be sure your long-term goals are clearly defined so that you can easily refer to them throughout your journey. Feel free to reach out to Danielle at virtual-efficiency.nl forward slash English, of which I will have a link to through our show notes page at technologyequality.com forward slash Danielle Molinar. Thank you once again, Danielle, for sharing with the techie community. We truly appreciate you taking some time out of your day this week. And thank you, techie community, for tuning in once again. I truly appreciate you taking some time out of your day. Click on that subscribe button over in iTunes so that you don't miss an episode. And until our next episode, when we continue to hear the journey, find the pain, and create solutions, enjoy the week.